The worst government in history? You bet. These are the interesting times. Hello everyone, my name's Matt Johnston and welcome to the Interesting Times, which looks and laughs at UK politics. The state of the current government and state of the campaigning has led a lot of people to question if Rishi Sunak had a bet on to get the Tories down to 50 seats, which is obviously ridiculous. It's not like deciding the fate of the pound or helpless people fleeing persecution. This stuff matters. The announcement for a 4th of July election did seem to take a lot of people by surprise, but not those around Sunak. We are hearing that Tony Lee, who is the director of campaigning at the Conservative Party, has taken a leave of absence. As we've been reporting today, his wife, uh, Laura Saunders, is one of two Conservative candidates being looked into by the Gambling Commission over alleged betting uh, relating to the timing of the general election. Betting on the date of the election when you just found out the date of the election from your boss is called insider trading something Sunak would be all too familiar with. So what of Rish Shifty himself? He was in Wales launching the Welsh Conservative Manifesto. But unsurprisingly, that's not what people wanted to talk about. When did you find out that Craig Williams had placed a bet on the election? And do you feel betrayed? Are you confident none of your cabinet members have also placed a bet? Well, Bronwyn, I talked a little bit about this last night on Question Times right, that they're properly and thoroughly investigated, as they are being independently, including a criminal investigation, as you'll be aware, by the police. And what I would say is if anyone is found to have broken the rules, they, f they should face the full consequences of the law. There we go. All done. Dealt with that question pretty well, and hopefully it won't come up again. Uh, next, can I go to Sky News? Uh, hello, Prime Minister Darren from Sky News. Uh, just following on from that, we know there's a gambling commission investigation, but on a principal basis, do you think, are you comfortable with conservative candidates or any conservative placing bets on the date of the general election? Uh, Darren, there's not much more I can add to what I said previously. Yes, newsflash, Rishi. This is a big story. Everyone's going to be covering this, even your friends. Let's go to GB News. To pick up on that again, um... OK, you say there's an investigations, investigations, plural, sorry, ongoing. But why don't you suspend them in the meantime? Because you're burning through huge amounts of political capital with this, aren't you? Told you. Yeah. <laughs> Cue awkward laughter. And he hasn't suspended anyone as a result of this. And the betting looks to be spreading. As others in the Tory party may be implicated, which would make them a syndicate. A crime syndicate. Joe Pike from BBC News. Okay. Um, did you have inside information when you placed your bet on the election date? Did you have any inf inside information when you made, made the bet? A huge error of judgment. Hey, don't feel bad. It happens. Just remember to learn from your mistakes. I mean, a large portion of the country made an error five years ago, and it's looking like they're definitely learning. Rishi Sunak started the week on a charmless offensive to Devon. Normally true blue for the Tories, this general election may change that. He went to a local farm where even the sheep, normally the most reliable of Tory voters, moved to the other side of the pen when they saw him. Maybe they thought we were the shearers, Sunak said. Yep. Even the sheep now associate you with cuts. Conservatives have always backed British farming, boosting our food production and food security. Yes. He really did say that the Tories are helping farming by boosting food production. Isn't that down to, I don't know, the farmers? But to be fair to the Tories, they have definitely boosted food security. You can't go in most shops now without cheese having a padlock on it. Labour had just 87 words about farming in their manifesto. 87? You do know that's about 10 times more words than build back better, get Brexit done. Oh, and strong and stable combined. Although this is one area where there is some good news for the Tories. As a new poll, don't we love our polls, shows the Tories have come out on top in one. The all-important slogan poll. Given a choice between Labour's frankly dire and uninspiring change and Conservatives' clear plan, 
bold action, secure future, they prefer the Tories. Although even that wasn't the whole story, as when asked about the slogan, 21% connected the slogan with them, but 60% connected them with unclear plan, inaction and unsecure future. Brutal. Think people are starting to see that this is all the Tories bring. And it's not looking like people are going to fall for clear plan, bold action and secure future again. Especially when you consider the Conservatives' 2015 general election slogan was strong leadership, a clear economic plan and a brighter, more secure future. And look what they did in the last nine years. In fact, if you want a farmer's slogan from the Tories, how about lie of the land? And speaking of apt political metaphors, Sunak then found himself all at sea in Devon as he continued his campaign by going out on a boat. But not before his life jacket was put on by his dad. As, as, as I'm not sure you should be. No, oh, no, of course. <laughs> okay. Right. Look at me, making friends, working class friends. I'm not sure you should be in red, Prime Minister. Oh, yeah. Yes, he probably shouldn't have worn red. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, that's not Keir Starmer. You're getting confused because of the red life jacket. Sunak then finished the week being grilled. Let's be honest, roasted by a Question Time audience as part of a leaders' debate on Wednesday. It was Sunak versus the great British public. Ding, ding, seconds out, round one. Are you really considering leaving the ECHR to push forward your Rwanda policy, which, let's be honest, is devoid of strategic thinking and just is inhumane. Oh, it's a quick lefty jab from the audience there. What has Sunak got in the locker? If a foreign court, including the European court, forces me to choose between our country's national security and membership of that court, I'm going to choose this country's national security every single time. It's a one, two, three combination of lies, hateful rhetoric and attempting to look tough. The referee, though, Fiona Bruce, isn't having any of it and is given a standing count to the standing count. So when you say it's a foreign court, it's a court that we were part of setting up as, as Great Britain, as the United Kingdom. It also has a British judge sitting on it. So I'm just wondering why you call it a foreign court. It's a court that we were part of establishing. Yes, and with no knockout, that means it goes to the judges. And I don't think that'll be good news for Sunak. This week also saw the Reform Party hit the campaign trail and get themselves onto all forms of programmes to answer questions. Oh, I'm sorry, that, that should be not answer questions, as they went on the airwaves to sell their charm and bubbly personalities, which went exactly how you expected it would go. <laughs> who's who's friend on Facebook. Yes, it, yes, so what are you going to do? Yes, what are you going to do with yes, the 41 candidates? Are you happy? Speaking a different way. No, it's not about inner London. It's not about pop talk, is it? Oh, it's about working cool. class people. No, it's talk. not. Yes, Come on. If it's saying that black people are like baboons well, I, I or I Sharia seen, law I've and seen Muslims. Like that. You've got yeah. to say five quid and a hundred. Otherwise, we're going to go bust. Do it. Get it done. We come Which from the world. Which departments are the most wasteful? Can you let me finish? I can't tell you what the OBR said because I didn't speak to them. But what I do know is How that you know top economists, to top economists, I know you spoke to them because because I do. That what I'm they say. I'm asking uh, you a question. No, no, but the point is rather than you asking me a question. Well, no, because a Reform UK candidate has apologised for claiming the country would be far better if it had taken Hitler up on his offer of neutrality instead of fighting the Nazis in World War Two. Are you proud Once. about all of your candidates, but, Nigel Farage? By Farish? the way, by the way, people are allowed, you know, you know, in a free society, people mm. are allowed to have different opinions. Reform were launching their party manifesto in Clacton. There was a lot of fireworks there, very much testing the heart conditions of their audience. Whilst D Nightmare blasted out things can only get bitter. There was even a rather odd political broadcast put on Channel 4 at the start of the week. Yeah, that was it. Just that screenshot, no music and no other graphics. And I think that after four and a half minutes of that, most people would have thought that their TVs were broken. But the polls have seen an increase in the reform vote and then possibly getting seven, count them, seven MPs. So who are the Maleficent Seven? Well, among them are Farage, obviously, who will have to spend his weekends for the next five years in a place that sounds like an STD. And to be fair, looks a bit like one too. Of course I'll apologise, Clacton, if he's not elected. The flat-top fascist will probably hold on as well. 
Then on top of that, you have Gary Sutherland, who will be hoping the good people of Exmouth and Exeter East aren't animal lovers, as he was once fined £2,000 for kicking a dog. And Rupert Lowe, who has wanted to make Yarmouth great again, and was chairman of Southampton Football Club when they went into administration. But the Reform Party certainly are a divisive party, with their anti-immigration, anti-trans and anti-climate change rhetoric. But they are also a party that gets things done. Nigel Farage tweeted that Reform UK will reject the influence of the World Economic Forum and cancel Britain's membership of it. Now I know a lot of people will start nitpicking Nigel's policy here by saying that Britain isn't a part of the World Economic Forum because no country is. Because it's world businesses that make up the organisation. But Richard Tice is one goose step ahead of you. What you do as a boss is you say to every spending manager of every department, you've got to save five quid a hundred without cutting the front line. That's right. And if you don't, guess what? You're fired. And all of a sudden, in, in the world of business, that's what happens. They save the money. They stop wasting money. Exactly. You run the country like a business. Then you can join the WEF. Then you can leave the WEF. Simple. After all, it's worked for their party, which isn't a party, but a business. Reform, very limited, I think it's called. But the reform candidate claiming that we should have struck a deal with Hitler is an interesting one, especially as I would suggest that their descendants and relations of six million Jews would disagree. As indeed, would a certain, um, Nigel Farage. The mural uh, that Corbyn said should not be removed was so blatantly anti-Jewish as to almost not be true. But I was never a subscriber to the madcap conspiracy theory that the Jews run the world. But I tell you who was, yes, Jeremy Corbyn. But Mr Khan, if you're worried about racism, if you're worried about discrimination, what about what's being said to Jews in London, the city that you're the mayor of? Corbyn's apologised for what he called pockets of anti-Semitism that exist within the Labour Party. Goodness me, if I'd ever said that, I would have been completely and utterly finished. By the way, Nigel, in a free society, people are allowed to have different opinions, you know. But striking deals with murderous dictators that invade neighbouring countries seems to be a bit of a theme with reform. You want to be Prime Minister. Mm. That's what you want to be. Mm. And this is... Ah. Europe is at war. Now, when ah. the war happened... Yep. The big war. Yeah. When Vladimir Putin sent his troops across the border in 22, you blamed the West, not him. You said, I'll right. just read it to you and then you can react, that on a tweet, it was a consequence of EU and NATO expansion. Is yes. that a judgment you stand by? I stood up in the European Parliament in 2014 and I said, and I quote, there will be a war in Ukraine. Why did I say that? Maybe the fact that 2014 was the year that Russia invaded Crimea, which is directly south of Ukraine. So pretty much certain what they were going to do next. Well, either that or considering who's bankrolling reform, I believe that's called insider knowledge. Surprise you didn't put a bet on it. But despite their claims that they aren't the Tories, are nothing like the Tories, and we'll be happy to see the Tories wiped out, finally something we can agree on. They still have a couple of things in common with them. Lying and ensuring the poorest in society pay. So why are voters here choosing this party? Well, Reform UK say they want to win over people from what they describe as left behind communities. And if we look at the places where their message is cutting through, we can see that they do experience higher levels of deprivation than the rest of the country. OK, so Reform UK want to raise the basic rate at which people start paying income tax to £20,000 a year. But they also want to increase the thresholds at which people start paying the higher rate to £70,000 a year. The way Reform UK have chosen to unfreeze the thresholds is overwhelmingly regressive. It's the highest earners who benefit the most. And that's it. No time to talk about Tories. Lots and lots of Tories. Ready? Here we go. No time to talk about MP for Plymouth Moor View and action man with removable brain, Johnny Mercer, who has gotten himself into hot water over his dealings with the Labour candidate for his job, Fred Thomas. Fred was a captain in the Royal Marines and took part in operational duties as seen by this commendation he received from his company's commanding officer. But big bad Johnny M reckoned he could smell a rat. Obviously, he's had plenty of practice. 
what you did in service is up to you, right? And people do extraordinary things and never get anything for it. The number one rule is don't lie about it. Lying about his service. You do remember that you were a part of Boris Johnson's government, right? But also the reason Captain Thomas can't talk about it is that the operations are pretty recent and still covered by the Official Secrets Act, which people who would have served will know. And certainly those that have spent any time being their veterans minister should and would know. Some other rhetoric, though, got pretty heated and came to a head at a local hustings attended by both men. I've got 11 operational tours under my belt. These are shooting wars where people try to kill us and we try to kill them. And your question, sir? My question is very, very simple, Fred. You claim to have led teams in combat. You claim to have led uh, teams around the world on operations. I want to understand exactly what your operational services consisted of. Thank you. Sorry, this is ridiculous. I mean, are we saying that we won't consider any political candidates unless they've been shot at first? Well, I'm going. No time to talk about Secretary of State for levelling the country flat and man moulded on his busy image puppet, Michael Gove, doing the rounds on the morning news network. Always good for a bit of entertainment. And Michael wanted to highlight the biggest loser if Labour win a massive majority. Democracy. But the, the, the polling at the moment is that I draw one particular lesson from it, uh, which is that uh, uh, we know that if Labour get the type of majority that these polls suggest that they might, then you have a supermajority, unchecked government, Labour potentially rigging the system in the, in, in the future. That is a concern. And, and of course, uh, some may. They'll ask themselves this question. So if Labour do have that really big majority... What's to stop them rigging the system? What's to stop them uh, giving votes to EU citizens, 16-year-olds, prisoners? Yes, if Labour have unchecked power, they will use it to give the votes to eight-year-old shoplifters from Lithuania. Would now be a bit of an inopportune moment to mention that the Tories used their 80-seat majority to introduce voter ID, although there are only a handful of cases across the country of voter fraud which disproportionately disenfranchised the young, disabled and unemployed, typically not Tory voters. And to give the votes to those Brits who no longer live in this country, but don't want to give the votes to those from the EU who do, and have used their power to overhaul the up until then independent electoral commission into following the government's priorities, including allowing for increased spending at an election so they can use £15 million from a man who said seeing Diane Abbott made him hate all black women and that she should be shot. But all this talk of super majorities and how Conservatives will need to be in effective opposition begs a rather obvious question. Um, no. Do you think the Tories have given up? Never say die. Um, you've got to fight until the, uh, the final moment. Uh, you've got to keep playing until the final whistle. Never say die. Backs against the balls. It's not over until you've blown the final £15 million. Tonight, in a Channel 4 News special, the seven main parties go head-to-head -head for the Conservatives. We have Home Office Minister Chris Philp. Yeah, they've given up. That was Home Office Minister and startled ferret shoved in a suit, Chris Philp who went on to show the sort of graft of reasoned logic we come to expect from this government. And that is why the Rwanda scheme is so important. It's a deterrent. It it's says, clearly not a deterrent, says, Chris. If you haven't noticed, the Rwanda scheme has actually not started yet, and indeed it won't start. So how do you know it's right it won't start? Because, shut up, that's how, would make as much sense as his actual answer. Then there's MP for Litchfield Michael Fabricant and his pet wig who took their double act to the one place they knew it would be appreciated. So somebody on social media said, am I running an election campaign or am I on a pub crawl? If you piss on your shoes, it's a pub crawl. If you piss on the rest of us, it's a campaign. Either way, I've no doubt you'll still slap it all on expenses. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you have enjoyed this video, then feel free to share, subscribe, like, leave a comment, hit all the notifications button, and I'll see you next week. Take care.